So we created this in the previous uh, how do I uh, section. So it was pretty easy, but uh, to create a more elaborate list. What if this isn't enough? We want the list to look in a very, very, we aren't content with having a fixed number of rows. And, uh, uh, we want the design to be completely our own, very imaginative. In that case, we need a list and a renderer. So don't do would actually to create a regular list surprisingly enough now the same things that are mentioned in the easier tutorial still apply this still needs to be in the center of a border layout this still needs to be a non-scrollable uh, section all of these things still apply we still have a model for this thing as well uh, where the difference lies is in how we do the rendering so we'll actually do something very very similar so we have the init list model so let's save this which will sort of break that and do a list model for this it should be exactly identical now you'll notice this broke because i just deleted that uh previous list so i'm going to take this exact code from here so we'll have a list model here as well and just stick it here and i will try to create sort of something that looks the same as the previous example only this time we'll do the whole amount of work we'll do the, the rendering as well rather than rely on uh, the multi list which does the rendering for us so what's a renderer a renderer is a special type of component or container in our particular case that draws every element within that list now rather than drag every element into the list because the list isn't a container we create a single container and this is an important portion we need to create a container not a form and we can call it anything but i'll call it renderer so it's clear and it's used like sort of a rubber stamp when placing elements so you can define uh, the elements that reside here you can give them any ui id you want you can do anything you want with them in terms of design and layout and anything and later on, when this list is drawn, then the data that comes out of list data uh, that you can see, right, the list items, is automatically placed into every render instance that is created. So I'll create two labels. I'll give them names. And this is really important. I need to give them these names. So this is the first item. Sorry, a name, not a, not a label. Uh, this is the portion that's important right here and now I'll give this the line 2 label because I want this to act sort of like I had the, the thing that I had earlier so now we have both of these and I can go back to main and the, this obviously isn't yet affected what we need to do is select the list then select the renderer property from here here we go that's the renderer property and there's lots of complex options here and some documentation and everything. We can just pick renderer. And as you can see, it did apply it. It didn't apply it correctly because the data here is just a bunch of strings. So it doesn't really know what to do with it. So I'll just remove all the data and add new data. And as you can see, it already automatically found out that this is the first name entry and that I have a line two entry. It automatically recognizes it from the renderer that I selected. So I can just type in anything that I want and the data, at least the stub data that exists here, will get filled in. So now I can go to the preview and see everything working with my current data. I can save this and then go to code and this will actually work similarly to how it worked before. It'll look different because it isn't as customized as the multi-list. That's its disadvantage when you create something as simple as this. But it's a huge advantage when you want to create something that's more elaborate, when you want full control of how the list should look, then you need something like this. And in that case, that is very, very powerful. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed uh, this tutorial as well.